Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back at the museum. Today a DCC 730 is on the bench. A very interesting model. As it turns out this is a trial run that we received. We didn't know it was coming as we just bought, we thought, a regular DCC 730. And today we're going to tell you a little bit more about the history of this machine and how you should be able to restore your DCC 730 if there are any problems. When the DCC 730 came in, we thought the mechanism was broken, as it made more noise than usual. Now compare to the one we have on display. Then we noticed the gold labeling instead of white and the lack of a serial number on the back. Finding these stickers inside makes curating the DCC Museum extra fun. There are several manual modifications done like this extra board. The board is dated March 1994. ICs are also placed in sockets. We also notice that the head looks different than the later release. There are different types of plastic used causing the extra noise. Other than that, this trial run is the same. Let's address the potential problems on any DCC 730 or 951. The stop and or play button sometimes is loose or broken. Capacitors are usually ok on these units, but potential problematic areas with SMD capacitors are on these two boards. The glue shown here is often mistaken for a leaking capacitor. Most 730s and 951s need resoldering in these areas. Let's start with fixing the loose stop and play button. We need to remove the front panel for that. We remove two screws on the top and three on the bottom to loosen the front panel. As we service the mechanism as well, we will remove it for easier access. First we manually move the tray so we can remove the tray cover. After disconnecting the cables to the mechanism, we can remove the two screws holding the mechanism. Make sure all cables from the front panel are disconnected before removing it. Now we can remove the display board.
on this board we see the same sticker with the trial run markings. The plastic holding the buttons can be removed and we use professional hot glue to fixate the buttons. Hot glue has the correct strength but also has some flexibility in order to be able to push the buttons. Next we replace both bells that we have also shown in a previous video. We have also done a previous video about the pinch rollers for these 730 and 951s, but there is also an easier way to get to these pinch rollers by removing the metal top bracket first. It is best to be cleaning the head afterwards with some IPA and a cotton swab. Lastly, we will address the loose soldering joints by removing the back panel first. By removing four screws the main board can be accessed. Look at this, this could easily be labeled as a prototype. Turns out these soldering joints were already done. After double checking we did see some small cracks and re-soldered them. The gear used in this trial run seemed to be of a better quality. After asking the seller about this unit and whether she was aware of it being a trial run or a prototype, she answered that she did know but decided not to put it in the listing. It was part of the Philips Consumer Electronics Approbation Warehouse and used for extensive testing. After 10 years it became obsolete and she purchased it. We are happy to have it on display at the DCC Museum. Hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time.